Welcome to part two of the intermediate target of monetary policy. In part one, we have done a brief discussion on what is monetary policy, what are its final goals, what are its tools, and the problem of trade-off among the final targets of monetary policy. Now here in part two, we will be discussing monetary policy with the help of figures using aggregate demand curve and aggregate supply curve and try to find out the impact on price and income in the economy. So now we will be using the figures to explain the effect of shift in aggregate demand curve and aggregate supply curve on price and income in the short run and in the long run. So let's start with aggregate supply curve. Here I would like to focus two important features of aggregate supply curve. It varies between short run and long run. Short run aggregate supply curve is an upward sloping curve which shows that supply can be increased. But in the long run, it becomes a vertical straight line parallel to X axis at the level of full employment which shows that supply cannot increase beyond full employment. So the total or the aggregate supply curve is in the form of king line. This part shows short run aggregate supply where you can increase the supply with the demand. But as it reaches to the full employment level, supply stops increasing. It becomes a vertical straight line parallel to X axis. Let's see short run figure. Here, short run aggregate supply is upward sloping curve and aggregate demand is downward sloping curve leading to equilibrium at point A, giving the initial price and initial income. Suppose aggregate demand increases to 81. So aggregate supply adjusts itself. It also increases in the short run. This leads to a new equilibrium at point T, giving the targeted price and the targeted income. But in the short run, the effect on price and income depends upon a very important factor that is elasticity of supply of factors of production. If the supply of factors of production are elastic, that means there is large unemployment in the economy. Therefore, with the increase in aggregate demand, there will be Increase in aggregate supply, unemployed factor will come and increase the production. That will lead to a large increase in income and a very small increase in price. But if the supply of factors of production are inelastic in the short run, that means economy is near to the full employment level. So if there is increase in aggregate demand, there will be a very small increase in supply. This will lead to a large increase in price and small increase in income. Now, a very important question comes here. In the short run, monetary policy might be able to achieve either the price level target or the output target, but not both. Explain why. Let us see the answer. This is a short run figure and a very important figure which actually tell you how central bank compromises with its target the price target and the income target why because central bank has control only on aggregate demand it has no control on aggregate supply in the economy central bank can influence aggregate demand by making adjustment in its monetary policy, making change in the liquidity and aggregate demand can easily increase and decrease, but it has no control on aggregate supply of factors in the economy. So because of this reason, central bank compromises with its target. Let us see here. Here aggregate demand and aggregate supply are equal at point A, giving the initial price and the initial equilibrium. Now at at point T, it gets the target price and target income. So now the question is, can central bank achieve this target equilibrium point at T? Given that it is able to shift only the aggregate demand curve. It cannot shift the aggregate supply curve. So here, what central bank will do? It will increase the aggregate demand. 
at 83 equilibrium point D it can achieve the price target but it missed the income target by large amount it again tried to increase the aggregate demand at point C on 82 it achieved the income target but missed the price target by larger amount so this clearly shows that it is impossible for the central bank to achieve both the target the price target and income target simultaneously this forces central bank to choose the mid path or compromise between both the two targets and it settles at point B on 81 where it missed both the targets the price target and the income target but by smaller amount this clearly shows that central bank has shortage of policy instruments and it missed both the targets by a smaller amount since it lacked enough policy instrument to achieve its target there are always and always a trade off achievement of one set of goal for the achievement of another where both the target are missed by smaller amount now a very important question here is in the long run monetary policy can achieve price level target but not an output target explain or in another way why output target is a quixotic goal for monetary policy in the long run let us find out so after discussing the short run situation with the price and income target let's see what happens in the long run in the long run aggregate supply curve is a vertical straight line at the level of full employment which is parallel to x axis aggregate demand curve is a downward sloping curve equilibrium is at point a giving the initial price which is less than the target price so to move to the target price central bank decides to increase the liquidity in the market by expansionary monetary policy aggregate demand will shift to the right adt and a new equilibrium will set up at point t achieving the price target so it increases the aggregate demand this will lead to the increase in the price at a given supply suppose the economy is at 81 at point b the price is higher than the target price so at this point central bank try to reduce the price by reducing the demand it it takes the contractionary monetary policy reduce the liquidity in the market aggregate demand curve will shift down at a given aggregate supply fall in aggregate demand will lead to the fall in price and target price will be achieved so here you can see that in the long run central bank can make adjustment with the demand but aggregate supply cannot be adjusted it is a vertical straight line at the level of full employment so in the last slide we have seen that in the long run price target can be achieved but here we will see that in the long run output target cannot be achieved so this is the aggregate supply curve a vertical straight line at the level of full employment aggregate demand is downward sloping curve equilibrium is at point a giving the initial price now in the long run when aggregate supply curve is a vertical straight line central bank cannot influence the output any change in the shift in the aggregate demand will give the change in the price thus in the long run an output target that is yt cannot be met this is the short run figure which shows that in the short run output target can be achieved by the central bank so here aggregate demand is a downward sloping curve as usual but aggregate supply curve is upward sloping curve in the short run initial equilibrium is at point a giving the initial income and the initial price now suppose central bank decides to increase the output beyond the initial level 
it will increase the money supply leading to increase in aggregate demand a new equilibrium will be set up at point d leading to the achievement of output target in the short run in this slide i have done a comparative study of short run and long run output target so in the short run short run aggregate supply is upward sloping curve and in the long run aggregate supply become a vertical straight line at the level of full employment so if central bank wants to increase output beyond the initial level in the short run it can simply increase the aggregate demand new equilibrium will be at point t where the target output can be achieved but in the long run if central bank wants to increase the output beyond the level of full employment it cannot be possible because central bank can only have a control on aggregate demand it has no control over the aggregate supply so even if it increase the money supply it is doing going to increase the aggregate demand and that will lead to shift the economy from point a to point b and lead to a huge rise in price but no effect on output so in the long run output target cannot be achieved by the central bank if you have any question on this presentation please put your question in the comment section and like and subscribe my channel to get further notification thank you so much